Details about code modding is here for City Skylines 2. So today that's what I'm going to be telling you all about. And this is part of their three dev diaries up to the launch of the new update with the DLC, which is the Beach Properties DLC, which also has the launch of Paradox mods. And I've already told you about the general overview of Paradox mods and my last video on City Skylines 2, which was about the map editor so the code modding i'm going to balance this video in terms of information and what i mean by that is there are some more technical bits that are more geared towards modders but there's some useful things in here for the general player that doesn't mod so i will be mixing and matching basically what i'm saying here is there might be some things you might not fully understand but you modders, you'll be able to decipher and understand most of this anyway. So I try to have a balance so you can sort of understand everything. So their sort of aim for this was they want to provide as much support as possible for things that simplify modding so that you don't have to make your own implementation of generic things that are required by almost every mod independent from their functionality. As for new implementations, so they've created what's called the modding tool chain. And what this does is by pressing one button, it will install all necessary dependencies and external tools like Unity Engine, Burst Compiler, and ECS that are required to make mods. And if any dependencies are updated or requirements are changed, the modding tool chain will notify you about it as soon as you launch the game and offer updates. And I'll be putting a screenshot up on screen and what that's going to be showing you is the UI basically tracks the installation progress for the tools that you need to mod the game which is quite useful and they've also created the mod project template which uses the new .NET templates mechanism and will be available in the list of projects while creating a new project in Visual Studio or Rider. All the required dependencies, paths and post build actions are set so that you can press the build button and the mod will be compiled post processed and place in the correct folder so that you can launch the game and see it is there. When your mod is done, it can be published on Paradox Mods right from Visual Studio or Rider using the default IDE's publish option. There's an empty publish configuration file in the project template which should be filled, after which you click on the project and select publish option. Then your mod will be published on Paradox Mods and will be available for other players to subscribe and use. Next, they touched on mod optimization. So the game uses some new technologies of Unity Engine like Entity Component Systems or Burst Compilation to benefit from multi-threading and low-level optimization, which can increase the speed of some calculations up to 30 to 40 times. Now, these technologies require both additional knowledge to achieve those benefits, otherwise performance can be worse than without using them all together. And the approach to modding that people are used to from City Skylines 1 would not allow you to get the best results you can achieve in City Skylines 2 and using tools like Harmony is still possible but it's still more limited now and to help optimize the mods they have introduced a mod post processor which makes burst compilation and low level optimization used in the game to allow mods to use the same possibilities of the engine that the game uses without additional struggles to figure out how to do that yourself. The next and final element that they touched upon was mod compatibility. So in City Skylines 1, the game updating can affect mod functionalities, and this is something that they've tried to improve on. As we know, loads of mods when the game updated broke. So although it isn't possible to completely prevent mods from having these issues, they're trying to make it less likely that mods break when the game is updated. The reason why they break in simple terms is the mod is looking for signatures, so things like parameters, fields, class names in the game code. And during the update, those signatures have been changed. They've been moved, deleted, or that sort of system works completely differently. And because the mod can't find them, it stops working and basically breaks. So the modder has to go in and find it and basically redo everything or whatever it's looking for. In City Skylines 2, this should be a lot much less of a problem when mods introduce their features as it's the same way the game does. And to make a completely new feature, you don't have to find different places in the game code and modify all of them to include your mod functionality and worry about the fact that one of those places of the base game will be changed in one of the future game updates. The only thing you need to do is create your own system and register it in the updating loop. And the game will treat it the same way it treats any base game system. 
So this should mean it should streamline a lot of it and should prevent that sort of mod breaking as much. They've also improved how the game processes mods and their dependencies. It could be complicated when one mod is integrated into another mod, gets data from a third mod, and then changes something into a fourth mod. What they've done is they've altered it in City Skylines 2, it tries to catch most of the such complicated relations and resolves dependency conflicts between these mods. And they've also removed something. There's no such thing as mod loading order when one mod must be loaded before the other to work. That's gone. Kapoof. And that's it. That is everything they told us about code modding. Some useful things for modders more than the player, but there was a couple of uh, interesting things for the player there. But I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think of this new info about code modding? Good, bad, no matter what your take is, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful and like to see more content like this one, make sure you are subscribed. I make informative gaming content, including City Skylines 2, but I also focus around racing and simulation. So if that interests you, stick around and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.